I don't know. I was not saying anything. Yep, yep. It says on air. Oh, we're on air. Yes. yes. Um, sweet. So here we are with uh, Young Chosen. He just released his new album, Glow. And yeah. he's straight from the down under right now, 9 o'clock in the morning in Australia. How's it going, yes, dude? Sir. Yes, sir. Oh, man, it's going good, man. Thank you so much for the interview. Big shout out to Rapzilla and just the entire team. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, Philip is a technological genius behind the scenes. He just worked some magic to make this thing happen. So, yeah, I'm excited. Sweet, dude. Um, congratulations on your new album. Thank um, you, man. I really dig it. I love the whole electro feel to it. Thank you, um, man. That's something I think more Christian about bursts should do, but, I mean, that's just my personal taste. I listen to a lot of electro, and I really yeah. digged the whole concept. Um, tell me a little bit about um, the album cover. So when I saw the album cover and I see Glow, um, tell me a little bit what, what you were thinking with that cover. Yeah, um, with Glow, some people have not got it yet, but I wanted to do something different. Everything I've done has been so photoshopped and, you know, font and basically photoshopped. That's the best way for me to put it. So with this album, even though it's more electronic, it's it's more uh, high tech in sound, I felt like I wanted to be a bit more me, a bit more raw and transparent. So when it came to the cover, I just fell in love with light painting. Uh, I just saw some beautiful stuff. I had some friends that would actually just do it for fun and they would go out into the forest and they just come back with these amazing, beautiful photos. And I thought it was awesome because it was natural. It was handwritten, but it was still so appealing and eye-catching. So I was like, man, let's do that on the album cover. And so literally after like two hours of like messing up in the woods, uh, we came out with some of the photos that we actually used for the cover. And even as we were deciding on the shots, we love Instagram. We are Instagram addicts over here. So uh, we, we kind of came up with the Instagram style and then even showed the process of messing up and finally succeeding and getting the words glow that, that, uh, that are on the album. So I guess we were trying to show through that the process that we've gone through with the music and with life. So I think that was kind of all mixed in. Nice, man. Now, it's, it's definitely origi original, and um, I've done things just like that since I'm a photographer, and uh, I liked so it. It is, it is. Um, now, the, the, tell me a little bit about the album title, like why, why Glow? Yeah, uh, give, Glow just simply stands for Give Love Out Willingly, and I know sometimes acronyms it can be you know, overused in, in Christian hip-hop, but I, for me personally, I just felt like, I mean, all the Bible, all the commandments, Jesus said, you can sum it up into two things. Love the Lord your God with all your mind, heart, soul, and your strength, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. So I feel like we truly are the light of the world when we, number one, give our love and our, and our adoration to God, and then number two, when we love the world around us. And I feel like that combination is how we as believers glow in this dark world, basically. Um, okay, now one thing that a lot of people probably don't know is you are actually now in Australia. Um, how come? <laughs> Man, uh, there's, there's so many reasons. That is a can of worms. But I mean... Number one, it was something that God called us to do. It was about a year in the process. I'm a, I'm a California, you know, West Coast, Los Angeles kid, born and raised, you know, to the core. Um, but, I mean, God called us to Australia. For, for those of you that don't know, I am happily married for almost three years now. And my amazing wife uh, and better half, she is Australian. So that was a blessing because we met when I, when I, while I was in Bible college and that kind of started the connection when I first went to Australia just to kind of get her parents' blessing in our marriage. That's where my wife set up the actual first kind of 
first first events, first ministry opportunities, and it just snowballed effect into God's favor. So now we're out here. We moved out here. We've been out here almost a year, and the the main why was really there was such an opportunity and a gap in the music scene out here for quality, but God focused entertainment. So ninety percent of what I do is going into public high schools, universities, and uh, doing shows on, on the weekdays, earning people's respect, building relationship. And then on the weekends, it's full gospel, full ministry, altar calls, the whole bit. And uh, so it's like a mission field, but it's still a Western culture, you know, shopping malls, McDonald's, the whole bit. It's really cool. Um, now, just for all the Americans that have never like, left the country, um, what's like obviously different? Man, okay, so number one, the steering wheel is on the opposite side of the vehicle, and then you drive on the wrong side of the road. So it took me like st straight up like four months just to get driving, almost crashed a few times. Um, so that, that's one of the big, that's one of the, the big changes. Uh, food tastes different. Uh, because, you know, all our stuff is based in America, because they're this country way out here, they have to source a lot of their, their stuff, their, even their beef, their, their produce. So everything has a, just, just a, has a different taste. That's the best way I can explain it. But I think it might be a bit healthier. Uh, I'll just throw that in there. Um, so, they, so you uh, have a better McDonald's then? Yes, yes, we do. Yes, we do. Yes, <laughs> even our McDonald's. The McDonald's is healthy out here. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but no, um, I'm trying to think any other major, major difference. I mean, the money exchange, uh, just the culture, the people are, 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 are amazingly different. But um, it's just they're very straightforward, but uh, they don't really care about hype. They don't really care about... Uh, some of the things that we, we as Americans get caught up on. So it's, it's a refreshing culture. Um, very amazing beaches. Literally, I'm five minutes away from the beach. I, literally, when I go to sleep, I can hear the water. So that, you know, it's just God's blessed us. And, and that we're just making the most of this season, man. It's crazy out here, though. Yeah. Uh, I'm just wondering, um, as far as uh, the people, um, how, how is Christianity viewed there? Like, is it something generally accepted or most people like how how is it there because I mean I grew up in Europe and I know that in Europe compared to the States is totally different yeah um, yeah yeah, yeah totally to about that. it is a primarily an atheist unchristian nation you will you will actually meet teenagers and young people that have actually legitimately never read the Bible in their entire life. Like, you'll say, hey, you know, so you know the story of David and Goliath, and they'll be like, what? Like, whereas, you know, in America, I mean, there's, there's tons of work. America is a massive mission field to do the work of the Lord. But there's a general knowing and understanding of God, of church, of Christianity, I would say. So it's very, uh, it's, it's very shocking. Like, when you you know, you meet somebody out here, and they've never stepped into a church in their life. They've never, they've never prayed. They've never, they've never talked to God. All they know of church is maybe the judgmental, you know, super uh, uh, legalistic stuff they might have seen in a brief news report or on television or whatever the media spits out about Hillsong Church or you know what I mean, stuff like that. Like a lot of people, literally. Are completely green and fresh to the gospel. Um, man, that that's like sounds like a whole new ocean of fish to go and catch. It's exciting, man. It's exciting. A lot of um, work to be done. Now, tell tell us a little bit what you're doing in Australia. Um, like you moved there, but what is like your your day to day job? Is that are you rapping day to day? Is that your full time job? Yeah, man, God has ridiculously blessed us. Um, his favor has been so good to where right now this is full time, uh, which is a huge privilege so we can just focus on, you know, what God has called us to do. But so, yeah, my, my day to day looks like I'll, I'll, I'll get booked for an event 
And out here, you know, in America, you know, your events are your Friday nights, your Saturday events, you know, a lot of it's, you know, weekend stuff. Uh, it's, you know, youth pastors and people are saying, you know, bring your unsaved friends, and that's kind of how it goes. Out here, it's not like that at all. Out here, when they book you for an event that's on a Friday, they fly you out on a Monday, and you do sometimes 10 to 15 high schools leading up to that event wow. because they want to get the unsaved. They want to get the lost. So literally, sometimes two, three schools a day. I've done actually six in one day. They will book you in the public schools, private schools, whatever school. Basically, wherever that youth pastor in that church is, in a 10-mile radius, they will drag you all around town, letting everybody and their mama know what's going on Friday night or what's going on Saturday night. And that's literally how every youth ministry operates. You do not do an event in Australia and not do school tours beforehand. And uh, so it's quite, it's funny, it's, it's quite different. But then it's, it's funny, like once you experience it, it's kind of like, duh, like, you know, I, I wish that I had a caught on earlier. And I wish that when I was back in the States, we could have you know, ripped into the three or four local high schools in the area, but instead of just telling the youth group kids, bring your unsafe friends, you know what I mean? So it's, mm -hmm. it's quite refreshing, but it actually makes more sense in my opinion. Okay. Back to, back to your album glow. Um, I'm sh tell me a little bit. How, how does it feel that your album's finally out? Like how much, how much time and effort and recording? Mm -hmm. Like, just, yeah, man. How does it feel? It, it it is literally the the coolest feeling in the world. I was just looking at a, a copy right here. I mean, it's exciting. I mean, number one, uh, being independent, an independent artist now, it's exciting to be able to put something out on the same quality and caliber as you know being with the label. Um, it I mean the, the the process was about a five month process. Literally, my my baby girl was born in October. We got the vision and started writing the project after we came off tour. Basically, at the at the beginning of October last year, started writing nonstop, literally while I was like stressing out, trying to work with producers and trying to email people in the states and all over. Literally, God dropped the producers literally in my lap. So mm -hmm. the production, believe it or not, is completely local, completely Australian. Two amazing Asian dudes uh, just caught the vision, and, and and we actually helped, and we put the whole project together ourselves. So it, it was about a, a five month process, and uh, so to see it come out, to see it done, it's fresh, it's current. The songs haven't been sitting there for you know two and a half years. It's literally right where my heart is, right where my vision is, and we feel like right where music is now. And so it's, it's exciting. It, it feels amazing. Um, I got a I got a question here from Twitter, um, which by the way, you guys can ask your questions on Twitter. Just hashtag Sweet. it, Rab, Rabzilla Live. Hashtag it. Um, we got a question here from Joel Clur one one six. Says, what inspired you to make this album? What inspired me to make this album was I wanted to make an album that number one glorified God, but number two could be played in any environment and be a great outreach tool for the lost. You know, I wanted this to be the, the first album you grab when you want to have some God-focused music for your unsaved friends. You know, um, I, I love the entire genre. I love what we've done. Um, but when you're trying to make that segue for young people, if they're all about, you know, Calvin Harris, David Guetta, Flo Rida, when they're all about whatever's on the radio, when they're coming out of that straight party scene, I wanted this to be able to be that first album you grab, you could play at schools, you could take with your friends, you know, it, it, so I just wanted to, to be that connection point between, uh, you know, some of the deeper, uh, uh, weightier topics and music that we have in our genre and just kind of be that bridge. That's good. Um, got another question here from Don Smith on Facebook. Um, he says, what's your motivation? Hey, he says, what's your motivation for making music? 
Man, I mean, my motivation for making music is young people. Um, anybody that gets to know me is uh, my, my passion is destiny. You know, anytime I'm spending time with young people, ministering at events, whatever, one of the, I mean, the first or second question. <laughs> Instagram. Hashtag. I, I, didn't, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, no, no. It's all good. It's all good. It's all good. Um, but yeah, I mean, I am passionate about seeing young people realize their dream, realize their potential. You know, I love sharing my testimony. I love uh, 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 breaking down those barriers and letting a young person realize, regardless of what they've been through, they can they can walk their dream. They can walk their destiny out. So that's why I do music to be that connection point, to inspire, to earn that kid's respect so I can have that conversation, that moment when we can inspire them to, you know, to, to love God and, and pursue their dreams and just go for Jesus. Um, okay, so let me check this out really quickly. You are actually charting right now on iTunes um, for Australia, what? believe it or not. And I don't know if you, did you know? No. Okay. No. Well, we didn't post on Rapzilla yet, but we're about to, probably right after this interview. But okay. you are currently number nine for top hip-hop rap album in Australia. Wow. Wow. Praise God. That's exciting. That is yeah. exciting. That's cool. Yeah. Congratulations, man. So definitely people in Australia are supporting, and that's really, that's really dope to see. Um, so good. Especially in a foreign country. That's just, it's always cool to see Christian hip-hop around the world. Um, yeah. Uh, let me grab another question here from social yeah, networks. Yeah. Um, we got one from Ian Moss, and he says, "Will there be any more music videos after Beat of Your Heart and Right Here, Right Now?" Absolutely. I am. I am a big fan of a quality music video. So, literally, we are just fighting right now about not <laughs> attempting to do a video for every song. So. I guarantee you, Ian, we will have more music videos coming out. Sweet. I've um, got another question here from, oh, looks like Ian Moss just went to move to Twitter to ask another question. <laughs> he says, is there a special dance for Stanky Face? Sounds as, sounds as though there should be. Yes, is there, there is. Yes, sir. There is a Stanky Face dance. Uh, it is... That is, uh, that I, I, but I'll have to save that because that, that just might be a video. So we'll have to, we'll have to hold back on, can't, can't divulge all the secrets, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or, or you will just have to catch you live. Yeah. Or, or you can just catch me live. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, any plans to like come back to the States, um, and do some shows? Absolutely. So, uh, we'll be, we'll be heading out there, uh, uh, end of the year. We have no idea what 2014 looks like. We're just, I mean, I, my, I, I love the States. I, I, love, I love my family. I still got little brothers and sisters out there. I guess we're just making the most right now of where God has put us and, you know, trying to be a good steward of, of that time and that season. Definitely. Uh, uh, my heart is to get back in the States and, and do some damage, you know. So it's just as soon as he leads and makes the move, you know, we're there. Nice, nice. Um, What's next after this album? Like, what are you working on? Anything else? Yeah, uh, man, a, a couple things. Um, it, it's really, believe it or not, it's. Uh, I mean, I know everybody just hold your horses. Don't freak out when you hear this. But believe it or not, I would love to do, especially being a father now. I would love to do a kids album. Um, you know, now that you see. Now that I have a little girl and now that I, I see what's on TV, I see these songs, I see these shows. Sometimes, you know, me and my wife were just looking at a cartoon that we loved as a child. And we were just amazed at some of the, the demonic and the, the witchcraft undertones that are in just everyday programming, even in the music, the songs. These kids memorize stuff like nobody's business. So I would even love to do a kid's album and to make quality music. Uh, God focused stuff, but something fun that you know all ages could listen to that could be a great resource for children's ministries, all kind of stuff. So, I, I'd love to do something like that. Uh, definitely gonna keep making more music, you know, just uh, yeah, I'm definitely excited about a few things. Okay, um, 
since I got you on here, people probably don't don't know about this yet since we haven't announced it, but I'm just going to let it go and tell people. Tell us about um, the song you did um, for the new King Culture album. Okay. Yes, yes. Yeah, I'm excited about that one. Uh, you don't know who I be. I got brand new ID. We be in your town. I'm just kidding. Anyways, um, I'm super excited. King Culture, I think, is an amazing initiative. Um, literally uh, putting legs on a movement, putting legs on a vision. I mean, you guys took a passion, took something that is strong in our culture, and actually changed it into a humanitarian movement, which I think hip-hop especially is the most lacking as far as you don't really see hip-hop doing a lot of that kind of stuff. You, I mean, you know, there's Christine Kane and A21, and there's all these other organizations and these movements, but you don't see rap and, and, and what we do championing those kind of causes. So I'm really excited. It's an amazing privilege to be included in that project. So thank you guys for uh, allowing me that opportunity and uh, giving me a platform. And then I just pray in Jesus' name that that album just goes ridiculous. Uh, the first King Culture project was off the chain. Uh, man, I mean, shout out to some of the guys that were on there. That beautiful eulogy video and some of that stuff is still some of the craziest stuff I've ever experienced. So, um, so yeah, man, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm like the, the, the little kid in the candy shop. I feel like I'm, I'm, I feel like I was that, 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 that Christian hip hop fan just a couple years ago. I was the kid, you know, screaming my head off at a, you know, at a, at a, at a one, one, six concert. And so, now God's favor to bring it full circle and now I'm able to be on some of these same platforms. It's just it's crazy. So I'm loving it. I'm just loving life right now, man. Um that that makes me um well that makes me wonder like um so you say like like a couple of years ago you went to one one six concert screaming your head off and we've known you've done music even back then, but I wonder when did you actually start like making music? Yeah, um, man, uh, you know, a uh, black kid growing up in, in, in L.A., the hip-hop scene, music was always there. It was just a fun thing. You know, you saw it at the family reunions, the freestyle battles in high school. It was always there. But my, my mom tells me that it was just in me from a young age. She says I was, like, writing poems at six years old. Uh, uh, and then that, so I guess it's it's been very near and dear to my heart, but pretty much part of my God journey is what, what brought me into making music and um, and I guess as doing it to, to, to save souls, doing it to save lives. But um, just really, really quickly about my story, I'm, I grew up in a, in a divorce home. My dad left my mom when I was just a baby, um, and then my mom was too young to take care of me. Uh, so while well, she was getting her life together, so she sent me away to go live with relatives. While I was with these relatives, I was actually sexually molested by a babysitter, and my innocence was taken away pretty much at four years old. So that started off my journey, um, you know, looking for acceptance, sexual perversion, pornography addictions, you know, all the stuff that was balled up. Uh, uh, going to live with my dad for a couple years, getting involved in the street life, looking for love in, in, in gangs and in groups of people, looking for love in parties, looking for love, all those places, the voids, the emptiness. But I was always a smart kid, did good in school, got good grades, believe it or not. And so I played the game, could be two-faced, very good, could be in church on a Sunday saying praise the Lord and on the weekend, you know, and the rest of the week acting a complete idiot. And it all came to a head when I was about 18, got kicked out of university, a couple weeks away from being homeless. Literally, I had come to the worst of the worst, was going to sleep at night scared, thinking I was going to die and go to hell, I was freaking out completely. And my mom talked to her on the phone, and basically she was like, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Are you going to stay with doing what you're doing, or are you going to come make a change? And literally in that moment, I knew if I didn't make a move right there, I would have died. And so... That was November 27th, 2005 is when I made a decision to check myself into a recovery program and begin the restoration process that has taken me to now being happily married almost three years in full-time ministry, now a father of a baby girl. And it's just been that restoration process that gave me the voice 
and gave me the, the passion to take what was a hobby and what was just fun and actually use it because I saw it change lives as I was in my recovery program. They would send you out to go like mentor kids and do the big brother stuff and what was just fun was connecting with so many young people and I was like, wow, praise God, I think I could do something with this. And so that's really, that's where the music began. That's, that's, that's where it all happened, man. Wow, man, that's a, that's a powerful testimony, dude. Praise God. Um, wow. I didn't expect that, but that, that's, that's, it's good to hear, like, man, Jesus saves. That's all I can say. He's, he's, he's amazing. Um, going back to Facebook, um, we, got a, we got a question here. Um, how does it feel to be a big Christian rap artist reaching teens internationally, and what keeps you humble? Oh, man. That is, that is one of the, 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 the actually, that, that's a big battle, um, you know, because our flesh loves the attention. We crave the, the accolade, the, the, the feeling, you know, and so literally before I get on stage, I pray, God, you know, you don't need me. You're allowing me to do this right now. Lord, in Jesus' name, I just, I pray that you kill my pride. You kill my flesh. I, I, I look at going on stage like, the priests used to look at going into the Holy of Holies. Like you couldn't go into the Holy of Holies unless you were had completely dealt with your stuff because once you stepped in the Holy Holies, you would die. You know, you couldn't you couldn't get that close and, and, and be off. And I feel like we have a great responsibility as artists to to be right, to be correct, uh, to be pure and blameless when we hit that stage. So before and after the show I'm praying, I'm rebuking flesh, I'm cutting, killing my pride, I'm calling my wife, you know, I'm, you know, you get home, change diapers, take out the trash, you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, you know, that, yeah, you just, it, it's a constant battle daily of killing your flesh because it feels so good, you know, to, to the natural man. So, yeah. Um, another question here from Corey on Facebook. Um, he says, uh, if you had to... How about oh that? Oh my gosh! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, you, I didn't even see you take that photo. Oh, man, I'm a ninja, man. I'm a ninja, dude. dude. <laughs> if, you, if you had to narrow, <laughs> narrow down one artist you have to you have yet to work with that you want to, who would it be and why? Oh wow, man, that is crazy. Okay, you can, oh. I'm gonna add a little. I'm gonna add a little thing. You can't say Lecrae. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I know. Man, uh, dang, that is crazy. That is crazy. Uh, man, one artist I would I would love to work with. That's uh, man, you can't put me on the spot like that. It's like, like I said, it's like you know I've, man. I mean, I'm talking about I've been a Christian hip hop fan since like Stephen Wiley, Bible Break, like on cassette tape Christian hip hop. Uh, so um. Man, one artist I'd, I'd love to work with right now that's just killing it. Um, I mean, I, 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 I don't know if this is, this is cheating, uh, but I mean, I, Andy Minio, he's killing it right now. Uh, Jen has, has, been, has been a great inspiration to my life. Uh, man, uh, crazy. Uh, I'm trying to think. And you put me on the spot, man. Um, Dang it! Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm 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 freezing right now, man. You can't you can't do that to me. That's, that's uh, I'm trying to think. Give me everybody, like two seconds. Everybody. Yep, yep. Everybody has favorites, man. So. Yeah. <laughs> ah. Anyway, okay. Just next question. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. No, you, you did it, man. Any manuals? It's good enough. <laughs> um, what what got it? What got you started in music? Um, you actually. I believe yeah, you answered answer that. Answer that one. Yeah, yeah. Um, are there any other artists that inspire you? There you go. That's a good one. Yeah, I mean, this is kind of one thing. I wanna. I hope we can not be so so. I mean, I hope in the Christian hip hop community we can not be so spiritual that we can't. I mean, we're not trying to copy the world, but God has gifted every human being. I feel whether they're living for God or not. So, I mean, I'll be honest, you know, when I was growing up, I used to love Busta Rhymes, love Kanye, 
uh, loved Twister, loved, uh, I mean, I grew up in the West Coast, so it was all about, you know, Snoop Dogg and, and, and the dog pound and, you know what I mean? Like, if I'm being honest, I love some of the, the technicality, the production, some of the stuff that is coming out. My heart and desire is just that our, our genre just raises the bar, you know, to, to, to be on the forefront and not to be playing catch up. I think, you know, with amazing, some of these amazing up and coming producers that we have coming out, you know, I think that we've, I think we finally dispelled that our beats can bang just as hard. Um, so I'm excited uh, just to, uh, you know, to, to, to be on par. But yeah, I'll be honest, I've, I've had inspirations from secular artists and stuff in the world just because uh, so some of their stuff is amazingly out the box. And so I just, I pray, you know, God, how, how in our inspiration, how can we, God, I just, I just pray that you, you give that to us fresh. You give that to us new. You know what I mean? Because I feel like it's out there. I feel like the same creativity and the same resource is now available to the kingdom, you know, if we tap into it. So, yeah, you know. Um, on a more, on a different note, um, are you going to see Iron Man 3? Bro, I saw it already because it's already out in Australia. Shut up. Boom. For real? For real? Boom. Boom. Wait, wait, wait. When did it yeah. come out in Australia? I thought you guys were only uh, one day ahead. No, nah, about, about, about a week ago. About a week ago, week wow. And, about a week and a half ago, so yes. Bang, I saw that. So, so yeah. tell us, how is it, how is it? Oh, man, Robert Downey Jr. is hilarious. I just, I, I pray that he comes to Jesus because he will be the greatest evangelist the world has ever seen. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, yeah he's, he's fun. It's good. It's good. Just I, all I, I'll say is, um, stay stay till the end. Stay till the end after the credits. There's there's always some fun stuff, but uh, it's good. It's amazing. It always is. It always is. It, it, way better than the first two. Okay, that's exactly what I was going to ask you. Is it better than the first two? Yeah, that's awesome. Sweet man. Um, is there anything else, man? Thanks. I just want to say first off, thank you so much for doing this live chat with us. Oh man, it's a privilege. Um. And uh, just really love your album. And everybody, go listen to it. Young Chosen Glow. Go check it out on iTunes. Yeah. We got the listening session on Rapzilla, so you can just play it. We got it on the app. Play it there. And um, go support the brother. Go buy his album. Yeah. And you've, you've heard everything here. Any last words, dude? Man, I just want to just give a quick thank you and shout out to the team that, that put out the album of quality. Just shout out to JL. Uh, JL Music Official, who, uh, you know, my boy Alex Hugh, who did most of the production. Shout out to Kevin Charm, mixing and mastering. Uh, just shout out to the team. Thank you to all the possible supporters. Literally, this this whole album was crowdfunded, Jesus funded. The people literally put this thing together. So thank you to everybody that was a part of this. Thank you to my wife, who helped co-produce, co-write everything. And was the final approval for all music uh just yeah man and just thank you to jesus christ for allowing me this amazing opportunity so i'm excited man cool dude thanks man god bless everybody thank you too. Phil. appreciate you bro hey have a have a good day man thank you you have a good evening yes and, uh, tell me how iron iron man when does it come out in the states it comes out friday ha 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 <laughs> uh, you know what that reminds me when I grew up in Belgium um, there's a few times the movies would come out like a week ahead yeah, see, of there's only a they few they tested it out on us there's only a few where they let a, they let the international countries get it first and I always yeah. thought that was the coolest thing especially growing up in Europe as a missionary kid it's like yes I want to see it first but I don't know where the reviews go and <laughs> they're like nowhere <laughs> Yeah, they, they block all the Aus, Aus, Australian internet. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, dude. Hey, you have a good night. Yeah, oh, I was going to say you have a good night. You have a good day. Yeah, man. Talk.